I had the perfect life. You know, wonderful husband, a great marriage. We just built a new house. I was teaching part-time, my dream job. And we had a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old and this tag-along little seven-year-old boy. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, you know, I get this diagnosis. A friend after I got sick got me this one day at a time one. And I think that in the beginning, it's just shock and panic. And all I could think of was, I have little kids at home, I don't want to die. Todd's a surviving case of her too was about two years. Um, that really sets you back a little bit then. You're in your early 40s and everything's going good and the kids are growing up and okay, and all of a sudden you get this diagnosis that, you know, the end is near. And it was a miracle catch, they told me, that they found this lymph node. And then the whirlwind, it, all I did was cry. I cried for two months. And my oldest son, who's 16, came to me one day, and I was in bed, I'll never forget, my eyes were all puffed up, and he said, Mom, you gotta quit crying. And I said, Grant, I, I'm just so sad and so angry and so scared, I just can't. And he said, well, Mom, my younger brothers can't tell you this, but I can. You need to stop crying because we need a normal mom. I think after that and the whole thing, it, Julie kind of took on some of that fight that she learned from the boys and um, she really started to, you know, take it on as a, a battle. Through the years, I had been treated, like I said, quite aggressively for my complicated situation. Um, I had had numerous chemotherapies, I had had many surgeries, and I had had lots and lots of radiation and I was left with an open wound on my chest. I bet you she went eight years with just the wound and dealing with the wound on a daily basis before the hyperbaric chamber came along. So I was referred by my oncologist to the wound healing department and there I was introduced to Dr. Caldwell and his amazing staff. We have a proactive approach to, uh, to treating wounds uh, here, and our, sort of, and our motto is we don't care for wounds here, we close wounds. The hyperbaric chamber came and it was like, oh, finally we've got something that we can maybe, that maybe will help us. And for approximately a year, I went in that chamber for two hours every day, and I lived at the Hope Lodge. But for the most of that year, they just worked on building a base of brand new tissue. I could see it too, and it was like a miracle was happening right before my eyes. I just, I'd be like, you guys, look. <laughs> There's granulated tissue. I became an expert in granulated tissue. Hyperbaric medicine is really the combination of using oxygen as a medicine uh, or as a, a medication and uh, dosing the oxygen that you use by changing the atmospheric pressure that the patient uh, receives that oxygen dose. and actually causes new blood vessels to grow into the wound and actually helps your body fight infection. Thank you, what's your birthday? My current diagnosis is I have stage four recurrent um, HER2 breast cancer, which is metastasized to my skin. And, um, I'm still here. I mean, that's, <laughs> I'm the miracle lady. <laughs> and I, I don't know what to say, but I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the people and the team around me in my life and the researchers and of course, my family who makes me say, no way, nobody else is getting my family. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna raise my kids. I'm gonna, you know, have fun with my husband and now, I'm holding my grandchildren. This is our granddaughter, Olive, who is three and a half, and I have the pleasure of babysitting her about once a week. Um, his name is Mason, and he's actually 10 months old now, and he's just started to walk.
mortality is real and you have to develop something in your head, uh, a belief of what it's going to be like. Belief in heaven and having an idea of what that is. And We've talked about that a lot and developed that place for, for us. And She grew up on the lake and uh, that's her favorite spot. And she talks about um, being at the lake and we'll have in our old crappy pontoon. <laughs> and uh, having a margarita. That's, so it's pretty casual. That's our spot. I kind of would measure my ability to, to handle my di diagnosis and how many days or hours has it been since I've cried? And at first it was like, I cry pretty much all the time. Then it was, okay, I haven't cried for an hour. You know, yay! <laughs> and then it went from weeks to months. And now I seldom cry because I realize the gift that I've been given of all this time to put things in perspective and to understand that even though it's a terribly difficult, hard thing, but there are also some really important lessons that come from all this that help me live my life maybe in a way that's happier than a lot of people do because I know that tomorrow might not always be here. I know that I have to be happy today and I make the most of what's happening in my life every day. Okay, now remember the rules. No wrinkles, white teeth, skinny mini. Got it? Okay, you can put that in the tape too.